Okay, long intro there. More spacey music from uh, Black Hole Free uh, Streaming Music Player, which is interesting generative music. I didn't have time to make a multiple hour music stream, so the generative music will have to do. This, uh, if you haven't already guessed, because it's kind of hard to tell from this point of view, this is a dissecting scope view, also called a stereo microscope, used for uh, biology labs and medical labs and stuff for large specimens. And this is the, a piece of a Honeycrisp apple. And this is just a zoom in on the, uh, <clears throat> the part of the uh, skin. And basically what you have is... At first I thought this was a lesion, but this might actually be... Uh, I didn't think apples had stomata in them, just like leaves do for respiration, but this might actually be a stoma. Looks pretty irregular to be an injury. But first time I tried looking at an apple like this, it was kind of fun. <laughs> so let's try zooming in a little more and see what we can see. Oh, we're already zoomed in all the way. So if I zoom out, and you'll see what I mean by it looks like stomata because there are a whole bunch of them all over the apple. Way too many to be just a random injury. Almost like eyes on a potato. Fix the focus on that. That's a tough focus to get on this monitor. There we go. There's a honey crisp apple. Use a combination of uh, reflected light and transmitted light. Most of these scopes don't offer a transmission light like a traditional compound microscope, but this one's cool. It actually has that option. So if I turn that off, now it's just reflecting light off the apple. Not using any of the transparency of the tissue, but when I slowly turn up the light on the bottom, it pops out some of the more details with uh, transmitted light. So that's one of the benefits. Uh, compound scopes, as I showed in the last stream with a fly, the house fly, you have to actually like sneak a tiny light into the top to make it act like a stereo scope or dissecting scope. It's kind of a hack. And it can't work, but th these scopes are much better suited for that. So, And with the added benefit of having the transmission light on the bottom. And when you turn that off, you can see they're more in relief. They're kind of bumpy. And you can see the shininess of the apple skin. Let's try zooming in a little bit with the transmission light off. And you can see the fairly grainy waxy texture of the apple. These are from a good store, so I'm pretty sure these aren't waxed like typical as apples are in grocery stores, so I believe this is a natural texture. But yeah, it's like some modeled appearance. <laughs> If I flip it over, you can see the tissue inside. I'm going to kill the transmitted light. Looks very shiny, shiny and crystalline. I'll zoom in a bit. This is freshly cut, so it's still kind of oozing juices from the cut. Giving those little shiny bits. If I turn this down a bit, I might. Yeah, it's going to stay that way. I have a different light I can use as well. 
more of a top light. It gives you a different perspective. And now if I bring this down and the transmission light up, gives you some of the color of the inner tissue along with the reflected stuff there. Nice view of a sliced apple. Now if I go to the, the margins here, we can see the skin. Microscopes are usually flipped and reversed. So, there you go. Let's try. If I can get more light on that. Let's kill the transmitted light. section of skin come on behave it's like driving with reverse controls there we go a piece of curled up skin there an area of the apple that's a little bit darker it was probably bruised Transition, transmit, or trans, God, can't talk, and transport. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still got a little bit of a flu here, so I'm not, not feeling top of the weather, but. <clears throat> so there's a piece of the skin furled over. Nothing interesting in here, so there's no parasites in this apple. There's some little fibers here and there that you get anywhere. It's just random. Either clothing fibers, industrial fibers, or whatever that's just the typical stuff you see in all the CSI stuff, you know, your, your clothes and everything leave fibers everywhere. So these days, if you're a criminal, it's really hard to get away with anything because little tiny fibers from everything just go everywhere. And they're usually very diagnostic. There's another area that's kind of bruised. Different color from the internal tissue. Kill the, let's see if the transmission turned up on it. All right, so there is a honey crisp apple. And hey, what the hell? Since my fingers are there, let's have a look at the crazy ridges on human skin. Why not? kind of cool and creepy if you look at for shiny bits in the pores on the ridges you see the individual little pores more so if I zoom in a bunch just gonna make sure there's enough light little tiny dimples those are all pores and because your skin is constantly moisturizing itself with oil and you also sweat those little pores will occasionally get little shiny drops appearing in it which is in one way very interesting and important in another way very disgusting depending on your point of view <laughs> so kind of hard to hold my fingers super still without a vice but if you sit in one place long enough you can actually 
See the pores emit little bits. Just to give an example of uh, scale. Here's some forceps coming into frame. And look how elastic the skin is when you push on it. It's very, very elastic. <coughs> anyway, just wait here for a little bit. Maybe we'll get some ooze. See little microfibers all over everything, just like fibers are just everywhere from plant sources, man made sources, skin fragments that look like fibers. Not seeing any oozing. There's some of that junk off the fingerprint. Okay, let's just hang out here for a bit and see. See if the body is doing its job. About those little USB microscopes are a lot of fun. They're super cheap these days plug it into your uh, computer or you can plug it into an um, Android phone or an iOS device via Wi-Fi. There's, Apple kind of limited the power on those ports so if you try to plug something in that draws power for lights and stuff it usually doesn't allow you to use it so hook it to a little Wi-Fi device. There's little portable battery operated Wi-Fi devices you can buy for cameras and you can make that work on your on your iPhone and iPad as well. You just take it in the field and look at whatever you want, and you can easily see this level of detail or close to it with those little pocket scopes. Because they get up to about 120x, and this is, I didn't check the, the objective I added to the scope in a while, but uh, this is probably pretty close to that. So maybe like, maybe 80x. Um, no oozing. Sorry to disappoint, but my fingers must be in good shape. They don't need moisturizing, and they're not sweating, so let's see if I have any, um, you no, know, hairs are also fun to look at. Let's zoom in on the, some hair follicles here. That's always fun. Let's change light angles here. Now you get the nice glint of the hair. And there's some. Can't quite make out the follicle very well, but you can see where the hair is coming out. Let's zoom over a little bit to some other section hmm. let's go hand is going to have more or this area of the hand is going to be much more interesting that's too high up let's zoom out section of hair follicles there there you go there's a little forest for you there and you get that kind of cross hatching that your skin gets partly from that part of the hand just gets a lot of use and also from age So 
and of course I have freckles on my skin too because I'm a white pale white boy so I don't have a lot of pigment in my skin so I get these freckles <laughs> There you go, there's a little forest. Forest on the hand. And if you get like fleas or ticks or whatever, you can kind of watch them crawl through that like an obstacle course. It's kind of funny. Um, imagine what your dog goes through when they get parasites like that. And I've actually picked uh, ticks off my skin in Brazil. I was able to get actually some macro shots with my camera before I was able to flick it off and it did any damage. But. Uh, interesting little critters but also very scary with Lyme disease and other kinds of stuff they can carry so so there's that um what else let's see if I can get a head hair while we're looking at hair I cut my hair a while ago it's very very short but I might be able to get a couple fragments out here There's a head hair, it's not very impressive on a dissecting scope, but you get the idea. I'll have to transfer to the uh, other scope in a bit. Very, very thin. Okay, now for some food products. This we saw the apple already. This is a piece of a high-quality tortilla. 
you can see the heterogeneous build of the tortilla. It's not uniform like a typical flour tortilla would be. You have the uh, the whole wheat smashed kernels, extra fiber in there. Let's try to zoom in on one of those smashed kernels. some whole wheat kernels smashed inside the tortilla. Let's turn up the transmission light. There's one of those ubiquitous fibers that you find everywhere from who knows what. black thread there. And here's a water table cracker, which are very tasty but much less nutritious because it's just white flour and much finer ground. So you can see it's chalky but fairly smooth compared to the tortilla. Let's zoom in on that break. There's a hole they punch in it, it's not a perfect hole. <laughs> toasted spot here. Let's do a couple of plant things next and then we'll go to some micro critters. This is going to be hard to hold just right. This is a lily from outside. I wish I could look at the leaf.
but with the back lighting turned on you can see the structure better separation Thanks for showing up. Yeah, this is a lily um, from outside. And it's just fun to do the different backlight versus no backlight. So you can see the separation of the, of the leaves and such, of the sections of leaf. And then if I zoom in a bunch more, actually that's the max on this one. Let's go to flower next. I started with uh, apple earlier, doing some big stuff. Apple, uh, cracker, tortilla piece, and now I'm into plant parts. So this is going to be a little tricky because it's so big. Let's zoom out. These petals have <coughs> nectar guides, so when the insects come to pollinate them, they can follow these lines to the nectaries to get some reward for pollination. And a lot of them, like bees and such, can see different patterns in UV light that make it more obvious in the daylight that we need to have a special camera to see, but it's pretty cool how they can do that. Sometimes the venation is just structural and sometimes it's nectar guides. Depends on the flower. Let's see here. Let's go to the back side. pattern there. Something you wouldn't see without a good hand lens or microscope. Let's see if I can backlight it. Now it's got some other spots from inside. Look at them, they're either 
flowers are the makeup, there might actually be seed pods. Just gonna try and smash one up here. See what I can see. pollinated. I don't see any fruit structures in here. It's just dried up and curled up. So, just dried up in the hot weather. It didn't get pollinated, looks like. Hey Paul, what's up? Thanks for showing up. Just looking at flower parts for now. Now I'm gonna, just for fun, I'm going to look at the fly from last time because I didn't have the right setup before. Let's see what it looks like this time. So this fly's been in this fly paper for a while. It's not looking so great, but it's still pretty much intact. Let me zoom in. See the hair? The body's just totally covered with hair, but not like mammal hairs. Their insect hairs are very different. Uh, come on, I lost my angle. There we go. Let me change the light because it's not, this one's at an angle that's wrong. Let's see if backlighting helps at all. Yeah, a little bit. Looks very alien. But now I'm going to flip on the super light. It's going to give much better light on the subject. Ah, come on, man. There are the legs. There's one of the wings. hate the insect but these are really cool wings and then their group called diptera so they have two wings instead of four wings it's totally engulfed by the swine from that gum trap Uh, wrong way, wrong way. 
sorry, this is all turned around. Harder without the stage on the other scope. That's about as bright as it's going to get, looks like. Maybe I can add this other light to it. It might help a little bit. And maybe extra light from last time. Where is that light? <coughs> Tinny coming out of the head. The eyes are still really wet. They're not dry, clear facets you could see from the other day. So I could actually decompose quite a bit more. Oh no, you dropped your dinner? Oh, that's terrible, man. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. on your foot too that sucks <laughs> don't know if I can get any more light on this damn thing let's see there we go a little more light Go down, look at the body again. There's uh, hairy legs and such. There's where the wings attach. I need to find a better specimen. Um, they have these cool little like dumbbell things that come out of the side of the body that act as counterbalances. Since they only have two wings. They still need a stabilizing force for when they fly. And there's funny little dumbbell things that come out of the sides of the body, but you can't see it here because it's all kind of messed up. Nice shot of the legs though. Very hairy legs. specimen that flies looking pretty bad. Let's do a couple plants from outside, just a couple shrubs real quick. If you watch my video on the uh, plant wave thing with the galvanic generated music from plant signals. I'm trying to talk So here's a shrub from outside. This is one of the ones I used in my little plant wave jam on my site, the synthetic site. This is 
there's a lot of detail on the leaves. It's kind of nice. And the different leaves definitely, different plants definitely have different signals, which is a lot of fun for the music part of it. Let's turn on the backlight. It's pretty thick, so it didn't change that much. dramatic if I zoom in and turn it on and off. And there's the hair on the plant there. It's kind of woolly on the stems. Sometimes you get insects stuck in there. Yeah, exactly, Paul. Hair's everywhere. Yeah. You just see my earlier part of the stream, I was doing the, my pores on my finger um, ridges on my, on my fingerprints and also doing hairs on my hand. Okay. This is another shrub inside there. More bland looking. It's not hairy and sticky like the other one was. Something stuck in there. Who knows what that is? It could have been a, a spider shed that got uh, covered in fungi or something. Some weird structure that got stuck on there. So this one's not as interesting, but I wanted to check it out. Oh, there's a little critter in there. You see that? Look at that. Might be a little aphid on the plant. Let me use a clamp here to hold it better. Walking on the little margins of the, the node, plant node. I need to get um, my healthy hands set out from electronics. This will be perfect for holding specimens. Yeah. 
I can't find it now. Probably didn't like the light so much. I have to go hide. For him later. What? I'm going to switch scopes because this is a different kind of scope. So give me a second here to move over to the other one. This time I found my uh, lens cleaning tissue so I can go high res now with the oil lens and clean my lens off when I'm done. So it should be a much better view this time for small things. So I went back to the same flower pot because I keep finding a few new things each time. Let's see what I find this time. That one's going up and down too much. I'm going to find another critter because we looked at that one yesterday. And it's just in and out of focus too much. So let's go look for some other things.
they won't stay together. view in the scope than I am on the screen. Let me rotate this. Now it makes more sense. It's funny to see him go under the cover slip without any effort. They're pretty small. Some animals can't, they get stuck sometimes. some other guys now. What else have we got here? That oh, was a rotor fur. Looking too good. I think it was okay a little while ago. See the bottom part is broken up. Just like that cell that broke up in the last stream I did. Rotifers do the same thing. You see the bottom part is just kind of dissolved and spilling its contents out. Let's go a little closer. This is why you need the different light styles because this reveals a lot of details inside. Like you can see the mastex in the middle there. It looks like a little um, coffee bean shaped thing. But since the animal's dead, it's not doing anything. Kind of like the other video I put up with a dead rotifer. Um, but. Uh, so the top part here would be where the mouth parts are. And then the bottom part, you can't see it very well here in this type of light because it's just only the certain structures are catching the light. But if you tweak the light a bit, you can see the particles at the bottom where it's starting to uh, break down and exude stuff from inside. Oh, 
Well, that's a bacterium swimming around, I think. Pretty sure that's a little bacterium swimming around it. Just from the shape of it. Those are just little flagellates, very small. At first, it looked like a little zigzaggy shape, which is uh, like a, a spirilla, other kinds of bacteria that are um, kind of spiral shaped that swim around in funny patterns. So, it's a pretty good shot of a rotifer, it's just unfortunately not alive anymore. Got a, I think I got the uh, magnified view in OBS again. It kind of freaked out on me. So I have to move around more than usual. So that's the head of the rotifer. And then as you go down, there's the body. And that little thing in the center with the a coffee bean shaped thing with a split in the middle that's the mastex it's always chomping away when they're ingesting their food and chomp 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 so better view of the mastex there and in the bottom is where the, the foot is normally located but it looks messed up and it's already got stuff like pouring out of it like it's already ruptured and I do see some little wiggly bacteria at the base so the bacteria have already found it since it's dead it's those little wiggling dots at the base let me, zoom, let me move down a little bit you can see it better little black dots <laughs> you guys talking about iPad stuff? <laughs> I love the iPad for music. Okay, so there's the dead rotifer. Let me zoom out for a wider shot. This one has a little bit of color to it. You can see the, I believe those are I think the dark section on the side is reproductive structures, but I forgot. I have to go look that up. But very, very distinct color for sure. Let me see if I can um, switch to dark field again so you can see the debris coming out of the bottom. You see it's very fuzzy at the bottom. Or well, in this case, the, the image is inverted, so it's the top. Very fuzzy. And you see little particles moving around down there, little bacteria and stuff. Just barely see it at this magnification. <laughs> Alright, let's go look for some more stuff. What else we got? I pretty much tapped out that plant. I keep finding most of the same critters in it. There's a nematode again.
through some cool sci-fi imagery for you guys. These look like little star clusters here. Oh, there's a little crater in debris. Look at that. Always look for debris. Come on, you gotta come back to the debris. Can't be finished yet. There's all kinds of little things dancing around, little flagellates going in and out of focus. Change the light a little bit, it's too bright. There's a dude going through that debris, a little ciliate, and it took off. All kinds of little dancing dots there, those little flagellates, a little jerky motion. Oh, there's the big guy coming back. Is he going back to the debris? Yes, he might be. There it is. Come on, man. Keeps teasing. Now yeah, it's up there. Now it's coming back. Come on. You can chase it for a bit, but it's not easy. Like I said, crazy video game. Uh, whoa, there's one flipping around on the, on the... That's a trip. This one's skating around on the, the big bubble. <laughs> now that's funny. This is the... Uh, Silly equivalent of a, a merry-go-round. <coughs> oh, no, a whole bunch of them here now. <laughs> He's just going around in circles on that thing. It's so funny. just right. Let me go to lower power. I could appreciate it more. It's just funny to see him going around in a circle. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Some kind of weird surface tension thing going on there. <laughs> I've never seen that before. It's a ciliate cyclotron. No, it's.
Oh, now he's going the opposite way. Look at that. This is a trip. I've, I've never seen this behavior before. Oh, now it's stopped. Somehow it stopped. And it's off again. <laughs> uh, this is hilarious. I've never seen this. <laughs> I guess Elliot's know how to have fun too. You get this behavior on the on the edge of like the margins. I showed it on another show with the cover slip where they they ride like the flume. Where the, the water pressure is different, the, the, there's like a, a concentration gradient on the edge of the slide, and they'll go sliding down the slide, or the, or during the terminator of when the water's drying up on the slide. But I've never seen them do it in a circle on a bubble like this. This is really bizarre. get just a little bit less power to get the whole shot but just damn OBS is cropping me let me try a real quick live fix see if this refreshes the video uh, let's see that didn't do it need to do Transform, edit transform. Scale to outer bounds. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, that made it worse. Opposite effect. Let's do transform, reset transform. Actually, I did want to flip the vertical because that's confusing. And let's do. Transform. Fit to screen. There we go. That's as good as it's going to get. <coughs> it's not, not the whole image, but it's better than it was. settings here because it's not behaving the way it should. Put that back. Let's go back to flip the vertical. That's more like it should be. So now if I center this. 
almost getting the whole thing, but I have to make do. You know, he stopped taking the right anyway, it looks like. I might have done the slingshot off, but I just I missed it. It was pretty crazy though. Now they're all swimming around here, having a good old time. little fun bit there. Didn't, oh, he's back in the debris field. I knew it. Since he's really there, let me zoom in again with some more detail. And you guys saw this one the other day with the big vacuole. There's the contractile vacuole doing its business. Nice 3D rotation. cruising by oh he's got a buddy oh now if I change lighting a little bit you'll be able to see the particles cruising around because it's created a little vortices with the cilia let me see here let me get that to look a certain way and you should see little things dancing around the body there nice vacuole shot there. See all the junk moving around inside? That's some cytoplasmic streaming. So if I focus through it, you can see the different vacuoles come into focus.
guys talking about Moog stuff, looks like. Sorry, I've been missing the chat playing with the scope so much. <laughs> nice vacuoles, look at that. Boom, boom. And you can see the stuff shuffling around inside the cell too. Really cool. Now because it's not moving much and I got my lens tissue, let's go for some oil immersion because what the hell. So this will be a thousand power. Let's see what we can see. And the oil changes the refractive index so you get a much better image than with an air gap I do have a oh nice look at that little flagellate flipping out there or maybe that's just some debris moving by the cilia that's crazy so there is a much closer shot of the vacuole and I need some more light looks like A little more light. Now you can really see stuff moving around the cell. And I gotta focus again. So I go higher power, and I gotta focus more often because the depth of field is even worse. There's the vacuole going to town. Let me, uh, uh, wrong way, wrong way. Let me totally change the lighting back to normal white field just to get the typical view you should get with a lot more contrasty stuff. A little more light. So because it's tumbling a lot, you still get the nice 3D look. But this is normal white field, this is not oblique lighting it's really got that funny kind of a peanut shape more than a kidney shape very oblong and of course he left huh damn it but there are some little guys inside there wiggling around Likes that spot. I got lucky. Really likes that spot for some reason. I'm going to hang here just for a bit and then I'll come back. Because at a thousand power, I'm not chasing anything. stuff around here to look at. Is it back? No, it's coming back, but it's making the rounds. Oh, now it's over here. And it likes that spot still. Okay, cool. It's going to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. It's a very asymmetric shape. From the lower power, it looked uh, bilaterally symmetrical, but now it looks all crazy shape.
Oh, cool. Now there are two of them here. Yeah. Yeah. Just my luck. They took off. Hey, Rich. Thanks for joining. Sorry, I've been not reading the chat. I've got some good action here. A thousand power. These little ciliates doing some fun stuff. Look like little peanuts. And you can see the contractile vacuole doing its water balancing. And he took off again. Come on, there we go. <coughs> and it's really cool. This one likes to rotate a lot, so you can really get an appreciation for the 3D shape. Oh, there's the other one. That's silly, they're beating up that debris right there. That thing dancing around. Nice cytoplasmic streaming there. Look at that stuff moving around the inside of the cell. It's very cool. And he's off again. He'll be back. catch up on the chat later. Gotta control this damn thing. <laughs> guys keep moving on me. There you go. Look at that shot there. Let me focus a little bit better. Nice vacuole shot. Look at that. Boom, boom. It's like a heartbeat almost. And this particular species seems to love these little tumbles and twirls in place, which is great because they just keep coming back to the same thing over and over again. Really easy to study these guys compared to some other ones they look at a lot. Oh, he's going on a circuit. Now it's over here. And now it's back up here again. <laughs> uh, there we go. Stay in place, dude. Stay there. Man, so much detail in that cell. It's crazy. All kinds of stuff moving around. Let me change the lighting just a little bit. So I got enough footage of this kind of guy, several days worth. I should be able to figure out what type of ciliate this is, but I have no idea at this point. Oh, look at that structure. And again, for people who didn't hear this earlier or the previous streams, this is all just water runoff from a flower pot. There's a petunia outside on the porch. Just water it and collect the water that flows through and all these little dudes are in the soil. Nematodes, these little ciliates. You guys saw rotifers earlier. No amoeba. I don't think it's wet enough for the amoeba to be happy there. So I have to actually go get some standing water that's around for days and days and days.
love this debris club. It's like birds being attracted to a forest. They just love these little clusters of stuff. some trouble in the hotel. Ouch, Rich, that sucks. should uh, collect some samples from the scummy hotels I could look them up <laughs> It'd be funny to have a series of uh, samples taken from various hotels Funny and not so funny. I feel your pain, Rich. It's no fun to stay in a skeevy place, but my dad was pretty good at picking shitty places when we were kids. And we put up with it because it was fun and we were kids, and it's like almost like a camping adventure, even though you're in a damn hotel. Just some really bad places at times. And maybe uh, <clears throat> not so afraid of Motel 6 and other stuff growing up because I got used to cheap places, so I usually stay in pretty cheap places and put my money into other things on the trip, but they can be pretty sketchy at times for sure look at that there's a vacuum will do its thing cell movement there it's like a screensaver almost like those old 60s projection goopy stuff they have it like Monterey pop swirly bits oops a certain way you can see the silly a little bit better let's change the light up a bit get a different perspective lighting on this guy.
sit for a bit. I'm gonna grab another thing for a sample here real quick. guys seem to take off so let me switch it up here a bit do a little cleaning of my lens slides see how this turns out could be a bust or could be very interesting
Oh, that's interesting. It's a little dark. Or more contrast, at least. So I didn't want to disclose what it was until I put it under the scope, but uh, not to gross everybody out, but this is some of the stuff I've been coughing up with my flu. So <laughs> you're looking at, I believe these are uh, destroyed white blood cells clustering together. And I've got pockets of them all over the place. clusters in here to look at. It's a combination of uh, epithelial tissue, mucous membranes, and white blood cells, and all kinds of other wonderful, terrible stuff. Some of these look like cheek cells. Just like mucous membrane cells, basically. See the nucleated cell there? Funny thing is, you look at blood cells. I should do a blood stain one of these days. <clears throat> blood cells, uh, yeah. Mammals don't have nucleated blood cells, but birds actually do. It's just pretty weird. Red blood cells. of stuff broken apart there. I like that cell that broke apart the other night on camera. These are funny little structures though. That is bacteria. Those little chains of cocci. Bacteria. Good stuff. And see they're moving with Brownian motion. That's the uh, heat from the lamp. Making the water molecules and such bump into them and make them do a little dance. Helps to defocus them a little bit so you can see the shape. Change the light just a little bit, should make it pop. It's 
Let's see if I can oblique light it. There we go. Get a little three D action. It's little wigglies in there. Mr. Wiggly. There's a bunch of wigglies in here. <laughs> Let's get more light. It looks better in the scope than it does on the camera. So you see some chain formations there as well as some individual dots dancing around. chain one here in the middle and a few short chain one nearby <coughs> and plenty of individual little dots dancing around as well You like that, Rich? <laughs> Anyone who got sick lately can appreciate this. Got to, got to have uh, you know, lemons uh, into lemonade, right? All in the name of science. See you, Rich. Yeah, there's the brownie motion. And I was uh, saying on another show, um, there's actually a brownie motion uh, algorithm on one of my noise generators uh, for modular synth. It's kind of fun. So that's pretty cool. Lots of bacteria. All different bits of it. Not find anything else other than that. Luckily, I'm not finding any protozoans in my sputum, as they call it. Oh, it's a bacteria, though. It makes sense, too, because several days ago I had yellow phlegm coming out, which is, you know, your body's fighting off some real infection. Lots of wiggles. God, look at all those chains. Chains and chains and chains. All wiggling. Now, if you ever wondered about the power of isopropanol alcohol one drop on the slide and everything is immediately toast it's incredibly effective so as you know it's used to disinfect when you get a shot or various other things uh, 
but it really works. It kills all this stuff instantly. And it's amazing to see it firsthand. As soon as it drops down and spreads through the slide, everything is immediately just... I mean, obviously the bacteria aren't moving here on their own. It's browning motion. But the ones that are able to move on their own, you see motion, like especially some of the single cell plants and stuff. And some of the sulfur bacteria and stuff. As soon as you put that alcohol on the slide, they're just toast. Look at those chains, lots of chains. Are those showing up on the camera okay? I think they are. It's hard to tell a little bit. Helps me to defocus it a bit. I see it better. Thanks for stopping by, David. Get some rest. I'm seeing some cell structures in here as well. I'm not sure if those are dead white blood cells or what. Pretty small, actually. But there's lots of spherical cells in here. Little Death Stars, basically. See that little. Looks like the nucleus there, a little shape and toward the center. Those could be, I mean, at this rate, they come out of my lungs. They could be portions of alveoli. <laughs> Who knows at this point? <laughs> You get some pretty violent coughs, you don't know what the hell is going to come out of you. But there are lots of them. Lots of little spherical guys here. Not your standard uh, kind of blotchy cells. Nice spheres. too. Some big ball size, ball shaped bacteria they call cocci. That's where you get the name like Staphylococcus and all that stuff. It comes from the, the sphere shape. And then uh, you get E. coli which is a bacillus which is a rod shape. And then you get the uh, spiral shaped ones like uh, spirilla, various spirochetes and uh, other types of stuff. Oh, there's some big ones there. Big stuff. Another thing I want to do <clears throat> in the future, I didn't put it in this time. Well, maybe I could try it with these. It'll just change the, the light a little bit, but there are these really cool, um, this German guy, Reinberg, came up with this clever illumination type called Reinberg Illumination, and you can use these colored filters. They're gradients, they're bullseye patterns, they're solid color filters, and when you put them in here, you get some pretty interesting results. We get one of these to go in here, all right? Get some color patterns to make it a little more interesting. This is a weird bullseye pattern here. Let's see how this looks. Sometimes the color gives you 
a little more detail on things. think does that look better than before uh, Marissa yeah it's uh, um, what is it uh, resistance uh, what is the M part Resistant Staph aureus, so Staphylococcus aureus, so it's one of the spherical bacteria. Um, I forgot what the M stands for. Um, nasty, though. Flesh-eating bacteria, basically. So when it gets in your body, um, they can basically change into that. It could be benign, and then it, something triggers them. I forgot what it is exactly, certain conditions. And you can, there's that famous story of the girl who was doing zip lining, homemade zip line in Mississippi River. Just, you know, muddy, dirty water and uh, metal cable broke and sliced her leg open. So she got a horrible infection from the river water. <clears throat> and unfortunately she had infection spreading throughout her body. She had to have her legs amputated. I think her, even her arms got amputated. And at some point it got so bad she died all just from a simple gash on her leg in the river that became uh, flesh eating bacteria. I'm not sure if it was MRSA, but there are other kinds you can get as well. It's really nasty stuff. It happens to a lot of IV drug users, dirty needles and such. So if you don't get HIV or some other terrible thing, you'll get some horrible infection from you know, the, the bac common bacteria that just change behavior and become very unpleasant. So that's a bluish one. And this, these are thicker than my other ones I can find. I have a thinner pack. This filter holds a little bit. I might have to bore it out a little bit because these don't quite fit in the filter holder. These are stackable ones, so you can get like a rainbow pattern with like blue in the middle, yellow in the center, uh, in the middle section, and then on the edge you get like pink. So you get a really interesting gradient, kind of like the old Star Trek show. Let's try this one. This is a magenta come on get in there a little bit of magenta action find something better to look at here Slide is starting to dry up here. There's a big cluster of something. <coughs> so of course a lot of stuff can be done to Photoshop or something, but it's kind of nice to have it live where you can completely control the view and how much color you get and how much contrast you get and 
it's different than post-processing. There you can see a couple little bacterial dots dancing around that big clump of junk. So there we go. That was the uh, analysis of my mucus. Fun, fun, fun. Let's go back to something more pleasant. Which is... The water sample again. Might get lucky this time and find something different. I have a feeling there's a limited population of critters in that plant. I gotta find a local. Um, it's been so hot, everything's evaporating. But if I gotta find a local gutter somewhere, or some other some other person's potted plant, and take some water out of that, it'd be pretty interesting. Just put my little thing back in there. Okay, let's go. Drop this down. Got here. More plant material, like little root bits. Kidney beans are back. This is very popular, these little kidney bean guys. Well, there's a dead rotifer. You can tell by that kind of a vase shape that they have. So, yeah, when they die, they kind of tuck away like that. Appears. The ones I found are like that, they're not stretched out usually. But sometimes they are. Let's see if there's any activity inside of it. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So there's the mouth part. This is the tail section that's retracted. Pretty amazing how they can telescope their body into a little compact shape and then stretch it out. Requiem for a rotifer. I'm not seeing any bacteria. So either it just died and they haven't found it yet or something. Oh, before I forget, I actually have, I can quickly switch to the other scope. I have some cool moss on a orchid plant in here. Hold on a second.
This is the kind of moss that can have tardigrades in it too, but this is a, from a commercial plant, so it may not have any tardigrades, but I can wet this moss down and see if I can find any thieves in it. Just for kicks, let's see if this runoff has anything in it. so far. That thing is. The hell is that? That's interesting. Definitely looks animal like with little protrusions like that. Who knows at this point? material. Nice. Give it some more light. Green is showing up pretty well in there. That's nice. Not seeing any detail in the cells too much. You can see the nuclei, but that's about it. Some plants you can actually see the chloroplasts streaming through the inside the cell with these little circular motions. It's pretty cool. Let's 
pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's go back to my quick search and I'll go look at the dissecting scope. that didn't make it. Okay, just a little more clumps of plant cells. Let's go to the uh, dissecting scope real quick and look at this guy. moss down a little bit <clears throat> so I get that sample let's see Kind of see the scale like leaves on the moss. It would look better if it were dry. The water's kind of messing up the view a little bit. Those are so shiny. But I was hoping I could find some little critters on here. Kind of shake this loose a little bit. Into the collected water here. You can sometimes see some microorganisms even at this scale. something but it's not alive some like like little root structures there it's really fun at this level you can actually see paramecium and uh, rotifers and stuff they're big enough at this power to see them swimming through like it's a little aquarium 
because they're not bound by a whole slide. They can actually go up and down, and it's really fun to look at them in a bigger tank like this. I'm not seeing any swimmers. Debris, but nothing swimming. Little moss leaves down there, and some. Dead material is kind of transparent. Yeah, nothing. It's worth a shot. You never know what you're going to find. This is how I found tardigrades last time. Here's some dried moss from a park soaked it overnight and they revived because they go into the stasis mode called a tun where they actually you know hummingbirds go into torpor but these guys go into a more severe state where they're basically literally turned off and kind of shrunken up and dehydrated and then you hydrate them i thought overnight would be good enough turns out it was and then i had that's a tardigrade video on my 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 teaser video that I put out a while back. Uh, while we're looking at big stuff, let's see. This is orchid petals that are kind of dry. Might be kind of interesting. That texture. So I can go inside though. Dried flower. Probably have some cool markings with the backlight. There you go. That's nice. before and after with the backlight here. Dried up, but still pretty. It's a color and structure there. I 
also had this other, I believe this is an Agapanthus. Again, do the backlighting. Yeah, it's not that dramatic at that level. If I zoom in, I'm pretty sure it will be. So no backlight and backlight. Give a little different color difference. bottom side, see if it's any different. Yeah, not too much going on there. But the flower is very nice. Let's go to the anthers here where the pollen is. Those of you that get allergic, you might start sneezing just looking at this. Very crumbly looking. This one's kind of broken open here. You can kind of see inside of it. That's pretty cool. down to open this guy up here let's do a zoom out button and some nice flower details there you guys know, talking the other day about the lighting this is a an LED light <clears throat> in this unit versus the halogen light that's in the um, the compound microscope so it's it's got a warmer light in it versus this LED which is very clean and cold looking good for some specimens but I think microorganisms look better under the warmer light let's see if I can take this see what's inside here taste that but I bet that's nectar right there to make the insects happy so very very moist pretty cool and what the hell since we're already there let's go back to the fingerprint action you can see the ridges see on the ridges you have the pores where you sweat and oil comes out see the individual pits there on the ridge. oh there's pollen on my finger just a little bit of pollen and 
And if you catch the light just right and you look carefully, you can actually see your pores do randomly ooze oil to keep your skin conditioned and also when you sweat. And you get these little shiny bits that kind of form as little droplets form. It's kind of wild, kind of kind of gross, but also without it, your skin would be pretty messed up. But uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Little mountain ranges on your fingers. <coughs> part of the video I actually put my finger in here for a while to see if you could see the ooze but it never happened I guess I'm not my body's not in the mood for that right now but it's fun you can see how elastic the skin is tough but very pliable You can't sleep, David. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Sorry, I get engrossed in the stuff, but I forget to read the chat sometimes. So. Plus, it's a lot easier to drive looking through the eyepieces than the screen. The screen can be kind of cumbersome to navigate with. Um, what else is left here? He saw all that good stuff. Oh, here's some other dried specimens. What's this stuff? What is this one? This is some other dried... Oh, this is a uh, sunflower that dried out. It was a gift that my girlfriend got. And she kept it on the counter for a while, all dried up. So I figured, hey, let's look at a dried up sunflower. Here's the petal, and here's one of the leaves. That's a pretty damn hairy leaf. Look at that. Wow. And look at all those little crystalline bits on there. That's crazy. Let's try a different light angle, see if it's a little bit different. Yeah, and you can really see the hairs. Little crystalline bits on there. Wonder what this looked like when it was fresh. I don't know if those crystalline bits are when it's dying. It's wild. Let's flip it over and see what we got. Yep, hairs on both sides. More of those crystalline bits. Really cool. Let's see if I can handle some zooming in here. Wow. Very resinous looking. Let me give it some more light with this one. is a trip. Let's go a different section here and see. It's got this funny spot patterns on it. It's color spots. I 
that's so bizarre. This would be a really cool electron micrograph, how those things come out of the leaves. Perfect texture for a really weird creature in a 3D thing. And then we got one of the petals dried up. Let's see if that looks cool with the backlighting. Yeah, that's nice. Zoom out a tad. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, there's something on this one. <clears throat> what is that? I huh, wonder what that is. I wonder if she dropped some soy sauce on it or something. <laughs> A little splotch of something. That's bizarre. <clears throat> it's nice and colorful though. I have that's big. I have mean, the scope turned on. I should shoot up parts of, I guess, that synth on the uh, dissecting scope. <laughs> no one ever guessed those parts. <laughs> Actually, that'd be fun. Let's see. Let's get a close up of a uh, Rowan boutique under the dissecting scope if I can fit it. Oops. looks like. <laughs> See how good the uh, silk screening is here. Silk screening there. It's in layers, though. How the EMV stands off the other paint.
Behringer, yeah, forget about it. <laughs> it's gonna be all blotchy and shit. <clears throat> That's funny. But yeah, it's fun to even put like regular print on here. This is the uh, the uh, Tiffin lens cleaning text. Let's see what this looks like. Pretty clean. See the paper fibers there. What's fun is this going to have paper fibers through here? You already see them in this part, but then you turn on the backlight. this off and I can really see the fibers through the paper looks like a space pattern and turn the overhead light back on and off again that's the backlight Fun, fun, fun. What else I got to look at here? Oh, let's take a key here. That might be interesting. for some elvish writing on here. <laughs> Looks so damn smooth and it's so pitted at this scale. There's some plastic of a key fob. See how rough this actually is. Very porous. And then you zoom out. Still looks a little bit rough. This scale, it's not too bad. Let's see if these shiny buttons are as shiny as they should be. and imperfections in there. Looks like the surface of Europa. Pretty cool. Now 
this plastic. This is scissors. This is pretty boring in uniform. The way they make these. Mildly pitted, very smooth. Ah, forgot about this. I have salt crystals. Well, this is fun. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Those little cubes. <laughs> Sodium chloride cubes. crystal and structure there. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Let me turn the light off completely and just do backlight. So this is the advantage of this one that has the backlight on it because this is a view you'd get in a regular compound microscope but now you can do it with a dissecting scope and have more control over the, uh, the zoom. different little diffraction patterns. Almost look like dice with little dots, like that one. <laughs> That's a trip. Oh, sorry, I missed this question earlier. Uh, the synth was the. Uh, <clears throat> Boutique um, JUXA, so it has the Juno 60, Juno 106 switch on it. Sounds amazing. It's ACB, so it sounds really good. I have the 106, the original um, JU06, and it's you know it's Juno 106. It's not a Juno 6 or Juno 60, so it doesn't sound as good. Um, I also have a real Juno 6, which is really nice, um, but they totally manual. There's no presets on it and no MIDI, and no option for MIDI, as far as I know, because it doesn't even have the, uh, the, uh, uh, what's that called, the, uh, circuit bus, what was it, um, I forgot what it's called, D, ADB, not ADB, something like that, for Roland, uh, conversion to MIDI. But I think only the 60 has that option, unless somebody else recently made a kit for it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm not, I would probably wouldn't modify mine anyway. Keep it stock. It's a D 
DCB, something like that. What type of salt? This is just uh, Morton iodized salt, typical table salt. But this is what sodium chloride does. It's it's a cubic shape. Um, I believe I have. I should have some sugar crystals nearby too. Hold on a second. Let's raid the raid the cabinet. See what other cool things we can look at that are crystalline. Just a second. I got this isn't kosher salt this is Mediterranean sea salt let's see what this is kosher salt would be fun because it's got those big ass crystals but to it so you can see the difference this is definitely larger granules and much rougher because sea salt is a mixture of different minerals as well not just sodium chloride so you get these big jagged bits all kinds of irregular shapes little icebergs and it doesn't have that crystal and structure that the, the little cubes do the light patterns totally different and if I turn that light off and go back to normal light we can see the two together here cubes versus the the jaggies there's the cubes and there are the jaggies very different now let's try I couldn't find uh, just ran out of sugar I don't use sugar that much anymore like I used to I get occasionally I grab a couple extra packets at Starbucks when I get the uh, raw sugar I like the turbinado raw sugar better because it tastes more like cane sugar than, than the processed white sugar junk this is a nutritional yeast this might be interesting oh that's too much Holland from before. It's very 
clumpy looking. Let's see. It's just backlight now. Back to top light and off the backlight. That was kind of dull, but I never looked at it before, so let's try this. This is a tiny bit of Nestle cocoa powder left over. I make a poor man's mocha with sometimes. This has definitely has sugar in it, but I'm not sure if the granules are, are typical or not. has milk solids in it it's gonna have all kinds of weird little bits in it <clears throat> that's a long view very heterogeneous close up so light doesn't penetrate very much. Funny how the, uh, the milk granules are kind of oblate, spheroid type things. Could I look at here? I got tons of random shit. I am definitely going to grow some uh, bacterial plates <clears throat> from different uh, drum machines and keyboards just to see what's on what. I'm probably going to take some samples from the music store too, just for kicks, to see what the public is bringing into the music store. And <clears throat> it's hard to identify the bacteria under the microscope without all the right chemicals and, and tools and, and, uh, and experience. But the fun thing is bacterial colonies often grow in different colors, not just white fuzzy bits, but they can be like, you know, various colors without even having to dye them. So I'm probably going to get some of my auger plates that I pur purchased this uh, seaweed gel with a nutrient in it and you can basically um, basically you have this little uh, metal wire has like a loop on it and you basically inoculate the uh, you touch the area with kind of a, a wet wire thing it's just to pick up a sample and then you inoculate the auger plate and then you give it a warm environment for about a week or so and pretty soon you have a nice colony grown in the petri dish of whatever it is and if you 
carefully place it along the petri dish in little sections you can actually have little different colonies from different things you don't have to waste a whole petri dish for one one colony if you only grow it for a short period of time and uh, so it'd be kind of fun to see you know what the drum pads collect what the keys collect what the buttons collect etc etc um, on different sense just kind of it's not scientific but just kind of fun just to see what's what both with stuff I have and also in the store where the random public is touching it and then at the same time um, I can also do the um, uh, there's another fun thing you can do just you know you take a plate and you cough on it you take a plate you sneeze on it you take a plate you lick it or you touch it with your fingers and then you let those grow for a week or so and see what bacteria and fungal spores are all over and all inside of you. Um, and again, you get different colors and different textures and stuff based on the colony growing on it. So, again, it sounds gross, but it's pretty cool because it is visual. You get a nice color um, showing that. So. Maybe do one more water sample for kicks. Let's switch scopes again. What's your guys' favorite so far? What did you like? it has There's the waterfronts oh the guy going in a circle <laughs> that was definitely cool I've never seen that before it was hilarious. I couldn't stop laughing. Hope it turned out okay. I, was, I wasn't able to watch the screen as I was trying to navigate around him. But <clears throat> if I could just get a slight... I'm going to play with OBS again and get a more representative sample of what the scope is seeing if I can. Because it's it's a little still a little zoomed in. And if I had it set just right, you would have a perfect view of him going woo, 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 around 360. But as it is, I had to cut it off because it was damn thing was being cropped god love technology it doesn't always work the way you want it to all right so let me grab another slide here Yeah, I should have some like um, those little wee wee wee, those little air uh, whistle things you get in the in the gumball machines at the store to to mimic the thing going around in a circle. It's pretty funny. in the circle and also goes in the bigger bubble circle I gotta say they're, they're really fun to watch 
Come on, go back up there. There you go. It's really going in a circle here. Jesus. That's nuts. Mike's doing limbo under the cover slip. That's pretty funny. Where'd you go? Oh boy. Lost him. Probably had that flume effect going off the side of the... Ah, oh, there it is. You little crazy bastard. Yeah, he's in too thick of water. It's really hard to focus on it. find another one. He's too wacky. something that breaking apart. Man, look at those particles dancing like crazy. Wow, look at that. Something broke apart. Look at all those dancing things coming out of there. That's nuts. sit here for a bit and then I'll zoom in. This is a really cool shot. Like a mass exodus of particles. What are you going to do, Ranzi? David? I'll definitely be there. So it sucks though because it's 5 a.m. for me, but I'm kind of used to it by now. <coughs> and I'm not a morning person, but for certain things I will do it. Man, that really is a mass exodus of stuff. Look at that. It's very astronomical looking there. All right, now I'm going to have to zoom in, see what the hell is going on there. It's just a crazy-ass bacterial explosion. Thank 
guess they could be flagellates, but really small. So bizarre. Definitely have somewhere to go. Some kind of attractant. It's more like a gradient, but they actually all head in there like there's a purpose for it. <clears throat> this is the fun thing about doing these long ass streams is I have no idea what I'm going to see, and some of the stuff I've never seen before. And I spent a hell of a lot of time looking at various things like this, so. sparse over here, but it's really bizarre. Like they're following in a trail. there. <clears throat> Can't tell where they're actually going. The way the hell out here. See anything that would be attracting them out here. And it's all in the same water, so it's not like it was a plasmodic gradient or something like that. It's not just going over here for a reason. It's like the zombies in Dawn of the Dead. They don't know why, they just know that they want to be here. <laughs> I 
Are you sleepy like a little floating little fluffy ball? <laughs> That's funny. I'm gonna go back to the origin here and see what the hell is going on over here. This deserves oil again. Thank goodness I found those tissues. so small. So yeah, this is the, <clears throat> the uh, like I was talking about the uh, spiral bacteria before. These are little cocci bacteria, little spheres, looks like. Some might be a slightly different shape. It's really hard to tell. They're so small. Um, but they, uh, you can have what they call motile bacteria, motile or motile bacteria. <laughs> that uh, can move on their own power with flagella <clears throat> other ones that are just stuck in place as a colony and grow out and just wiggle a brownie in motion these guys are definitely on the move pretty fast too Whatever the hell this thing was. It's like a stream. So many of them. <laughs> Tons of them right here just kind of sitting in place.
Never sent to a busy little colony here. It's crazy. <coughs> back out a step and see where the exodus is going. Looks like I mostly stopped. I'm not seeing the movement anymore. Weird. <coughs> stopped. See the slide is starting to dry out. It's getting crystal uh, crystal formation on the edges. It's colored <laughs> colored margins. It's really bizarre. I don't think the slide already dry up. So that let's see the waterfronts. Yeah, there's the waterfront there. It's getting there. was a trip. You guys still there or did you go off to La La Land? Did one more just for hell of it. Let's see what I can see. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Damn it. Thought I hit the mute button. Sorry.
Hey, Dave, no problem. Hope you get some sleep. I'll be uh, going to bed at some point as well. It's not it's still early for me. It's not even 11 yet, but <clears throat> I wanted to get some sleep for the crazy morning show. So have a good night. I think Paul already took off, so if not, see you later, Paul.